Hey ref, I'm looking at it right here. You made a mistake. Da 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 da. Oh hey, hey! Welcome back to another episode of Basketball Rules Expert. The show where we lift National Federation of High School rules off of the printed page. We breathe life into them, amplify, clarify, and simplify so that you can take them onto the basketball court with you and be a basketball rules expert. Hello again, everybody. My name is Greg Austin with abetterofficial.com. I've been a high school basketball official for over a decade, and I am a basketball rules expert. This show is all about explaining the rules, clarifying the rules, so that you can become a basketball rules expert as well. If that applies to you, hit subscribe below. Hit the notify bell so that you don't miss out on anything. Hey, let me start by giving a couple of shout outs to supporters of the show, Dean Hodges and Matthew Wynn. Thank you. Also, two super supporters of the show, Joe Esposito and Darwin Sonata. Much appreciated, much love. If you'd like to be a supporter of the show, you can always simply click the link above. All right, let's get started with today's episode. We'll start today with a suggestion for video through the YouTube comments. If you have a suggestion for an area of rules coverage, let us know through the YouTube comments. You can reach us at Better Officials on Twitter or B-R-E at abetterofficial.com. But through the YouTube comments, Adam C. writes, Greg, how about a video about the differences and limitations for technical fouls and penalties for each, i.e. player, team, bench, coach, and administrative? Also, which count towards team foul count? Adam, thank you very much. Perfect subject for us to cover on Basketball Rules Expert. So today we'll begin a multi-part series on technical fouls, differences, and administration. Now, in general, let's talk about all technical fouls. The penalty is the same. Two free throws for the offended team and the ball at the division line opposite the table for each technical foul. Whether it's an administrative technical foul, a substitute technical foul, a team technical foul, a player technical foul, or a bench technical foul. In each situation, the penalty in high school is always two free throws and the ball at the division line opposite the table for the offended team. All right, we're starting with rule 10, fouls and their penalties. A quick overview for administrative technical fouls. There are four articles. Two of them are very common. Two of them are not so common and really aren't really a thing. So article three, use a megaphone or any electronic communication device or electronic equipment for voice communication with players on the court or use or use electronic audio and or video devices to review a decision of the contest officials. Fail to occupy a team member's bench to which it was assigned. In my experience over a decade of officiating, I've never had either of those two scenarios. So they're super unlikely. I guess in theory, uh, teams are allowed to use electronic devices, an iPad. Right, they can tra- uh, track statistics, etc. I guess, in theory, if on their electronic device they had a replay of the block charge play you just made, and are looking at it and say, "Hey, ref, I'm looking at it right here. You made a mistake." Da 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 da. That in theory, that is a administrative technical foul. Very strange that they put it in the administrative area, but. That's where it is. Fail to occupy a team member's bench to which it was assigned. Where do they sit? Uh, you know, it's, it's difficult to understand that. But those two exist. Much more common. Much more common and will happen in your game. And you need to be an expert in these areas 
are Article 1 and Article 2. Failure to supply the scorer with a roster and starters prior to the 10-minute mark. And then Article 2, change a designated starter unless necessitated, as in 3-2-2A. B, add a name to the team member list. We forgot somebody on the roster. We have to add it to the list. C, require the scorer to change a team member's or player's number in the scorebook. D, require a player to change to the number in the scorebook. Or E, have identical numbers on team members and or players. So, all of those things can happen in the game. And we'll start with Section 1, the Administrative Technical Foul. Section 1, a team must not, Article 1, fail to supply the scorer with the name and number of each team member who may participate and designate the five starting players at least 10 minutes before the scheduled starting time. So, clearly lays out the responsibility each team must provide a list of team members who may participate, their roster, and designate their five starters. Let's be clear, in no way, shape, or form is a team required to have the book ready. That is not a thing. Teams are required to submit their roster. They may submit their roster with designated starters marked. They may do that through a printed sheet that they give to the official scorer, or that it may simply be um, their book. Like a visiting team shows up, their scorer prepares their book, gets it ready to go. They don't have the other players' rosters. Usually the, team, the two books exchange books and copy. Here's my information, here's your information, etc. So we may supply it by a sheet, and say, here's the information, or we may supply it by saying, here's our portion of the book that's been prepared. It lists our roster, and it lists our designated starters. That is sufficient. Whether the book is prepared or not is not a thing. Teams must submit a roster. If they do not, if a team has not submitted their roster properly prior to 10 minutes, then there is an administrative technical foul. So, there's two portions, submit the team members, also designate the starters. Those two are a package deal. If you violate either, we submitted our roster, we failed to designate the starters, or we designated the starters, but we failed to submit the roster, hard to do that. It is a single administrative technical foul. If an administrative technical foul was issued in this instance, the game would start with technical foul free throws and a division line throw in for the offended team. Okay, let's look at Article A. Change a designated starter unless necessitated as in 3-2-2A. Perfect. Let's look at 3-2-2A and see what it says. 3-2-2A. Changing a designated starter unless necessitated by injury, illness, illegal equipment, or apparel, etc., or to attempt a technical foul free throw. Great. Let's discuss this. So, when may a team replace a designated starter? We have our designated starters in the book. Players are warming up. Player goes up for a layup, lands funny, twists an ankle. They are out. They have been injured prior to the game, and they will not be a starting player. That player may be replaced by rule. That is not a violation. There is no administrative technical foul. A player grows ill during warm-ups, or they, prior to warm they just, they can't go. They're throwing up, they, et cetera, right? They can't go. They're replaced for illness. So illness and injury always always allows for replacement. Illegal equipment or apparel, etc. Let's say a starter is warming up. 
And we notice that this player has an earring. And information is provided that the player cannot participate wearing jewelry. Absolutely cannot participate. The player says to the coach, Coach, I just got this done. I can't remove it. He says, then you can't play. And it's like, fine, I can't play. Right? They have illegal equipment. They need to be replaced. In this situation, no administrative technical foul. Illegal apparel. Shooting shirts come off. Players come onto the court for a jump ball. The officials notice that one of the players is illegally equipped. They have an illegal undershirt. It is a compression, long sleeve undershirt, female player. It, maybe it's a, it's a leotard or whatever, but the player cannot quickly remove it and fix it. Coach says, can I substitute for the player until she gets right? They bring a substitute into the game, legal. No administrative technical. Now let's talk about the final clause here. Tactical foul free throws. Pre-game dunk by Team A. So we go to Team B coach. Hey, we're going to start the game with tactical foul free throws for your team. He's got five starters listed. Tactical fouls. He wants Billy. Billy's at the end of the bench. It's the last game of the season. And Billy doesn't get a lot of playing time. He wants Billy to shoot the tactical foul free throws. Can Billy shoot the tactical foul free throws? Who could shoot tactical foul free throws? Any player or eligible substitute? The eligible substitute shoots the tactical foul free throws? Legal. By rule. All right, let's continue to look at Article 2. So we know that we can change. We may not change a designated starter unless injury, illness, illegal equipment, illegal apparel, or for technical foul free throws. B, add a name to the team member list. Very common scenario. Game has started. We're playing basketball. Substitutes are coming in. Come on in, players. We get a horn from the table. Hey, ref, white 33, not in the book. White 33 is not in the book. We need to add white 33 to the scorebook. That will result in an administrative technical foul. C, require the scorer to change a team member or player's number in the scorebook. White 33, come on into the game. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, ref, White 33 is not in the book. Coach, he's in the book. Go to the book. Oh, he's listed as 31. He changed his number a couple of games ago. Is that okay? No. We need to make a change to the scorebook that will result in an administrative technical foul. Same scenario. Require a player to change to the number in the scorebook. White 33 shows up. We beckon him into the game. Bop, bop, bop. 33 is not in the scorebook. He's got his actual number in the scorebook is 31. He says, Coach, I got 30, my 31 jersey in my bag. Can I switch? If that happens, administrative technical foul. We have an administrative technical foul in this scenario in any event. E, have identical numbers to team members and or players. Ha can happen more likely at lower level games, JV, freshman, middle school, etc., where uniforms are um, not always consistent and the best quality, right? It can happen. We have two, the game is going on. Visiting coach says, hey, there's two number 12s. They have two number 12s, right? We notice when it is recognized, it is penalized. That would be an administrative technical foul, right? Those are all the possible administrative technical fouls. What's unique about administrative technical fouls is all of those clauses, that's all one package. We only enforce a maximum of one penalty for all of those violations combined. So our game starts, White 33 is beckoned into the game. The table says, hey, ref, White 33 not in the book. We have to add him to the book. 
We assess administrative technical foul to the team. We enforce, we, we do the penalty. The game continues on. Later in the game, white 22 comes in. Hey ref, white 22 is not in the book. Okay, we've already enforced the penalty once. We will not enforce another penalty. Even though this, we have to add the player to the book, we will not enforce the penalty. Later in the game, visiting coach, hey, they have two number 12s, right? Again, we will not enforce. A maximum of one enforcement of the penalty for all of the clauses of Article 2 in administrative technical fouls. But understand that is unique into itself. So before the game, the team does not submit their roster before the 10-minute mark. We assess an administrative tactical foul. The game starts with an administrative tactical foul. The game proceeds. And now, substitutes come in. Hey, white 33, not in the book. Since it's a violation of Article 2, it is not related to Article 1. So we've assessed a tactical foul related to late submission of the team roster and designated starters. That is its own penalty. Now we're on to Article 2, White 33 comes into the game, not in the book, have to be added. We're going to add them to the book, but we are going to assess a second administrative technical foul to the team. This is a different administrative technical foul. And should later in the game, White 22 comes in, hey ref, not in the book. We've already assessed a technical foul for the Article 2 of technical fouls, we would not assess another one. All right, that gets us started into our exploration of technical fouls. This is a great start. Thanks again to Adam C. for submitting the question. If you want your idea for a rules question to be answered, submit it. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the show. If you find content like this valuable, make sure to hit subscribe below and the notify bell. You don't want to miss on, on any of our content. As we do with every episode, we've created a quiz over at the show notes back at abetterofficial.com. The link is above. If you want to become a supporter of the show, you can always buy us a coffee at abetterofficial.com slash coffee. That link is above as well. Additional video content, as always, is available here. We're going to see you in the next video. Take care.